You know, I've been hearing the phrase, no pain, no gain, since I was a kid. And what there is to gain comes in many forms. While my two children were in elementary school, I took a side job selling shoes at a running store just on the edge of Harvard Square. It was a cool gig when I wasn't in school or at home with my family. And it gave me the chance to have conversations with a diverse group of people from every walk of life. One morning, I remember helping a woman who came by to try on a selection of the newest brands. She mentioned that she got into running after undergoing intense chemotherapy when she was in her 20s. And she went on to describe how scary those difficult years were. And she added that running was vital to her maintaining a healthier lifestyle. She had completed her first marathon the year prior and was training for her next. And I told her how inspirational it was to hear her story. Turning back to the shoes she was lacing up, she asked me if this particular pair of Asics would last about a thousand miles. I spotted the tattered pair of shoes that she had worn to the store and I picked up one of the old shoes and started to study it. When did you buy these? I asked. Six months ago, she said, and my knees have been hurting in recent weeks. Looking closer at the wear marks on the treads, I could see that she had waited about a month too long. I quickly did the math in my head. Hmm, six months. I'm guessing you're running about 40 miles a week, eh? She smiled. How did you know that? I held up the shoe. She finally decided to buy the pair of ASICs, and after paying for her shoes, I said as she was leaving, I'll see you in five months this time, right? She smiled back and said, I'll see you in four. I'm planning to put in one more long run a week. That sort of confidence often showed its face in the running store, especially in the attitudes of people who had so much to overcome. It's hard to forget someone pushing herself to the distance after surviving a race for her life. The German writer, Te Dorn, writes about this mindset of hope in a recent article that translates as optimism, a question of attitude. She says that optimistic confidence is not the calming feeling that comes with the slipstream of favorable forecasts, but rather a character muscle that needs to be trained. And as with any training of our muscles, it doesn't work without resistance. For many caregivers who dedicate their efforts to making a difference in the lives of young people, it may seem that resistance in the shape of life lessons during adolescence shows its face at every corner. We too are in daily training, carrying a baton, so to speak, of understanding. And the resistance we're often hurtling is a necessary part of meeting those needs where they are. So we can't ignore that attitude of optimism. It's conditioned over time, enduring the painful realities we all navigate. And it's the means to gain that one thing that eludes many when things get difficult, and what that cancer survivor in the running shop had already gained, hope.